Hey guys, Christian with AppTuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 3 from the Jan 2018 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the other solutions for this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So please be sure to check those out as well. And with that, let's get into the question. So the first thing we do, of course, is take a read. So let's highlight this section here. So it says, fire destroyed the records of Sweet Serve Company. You were able to ascertain the following records for the period up to the fire. So let's take a look. So sales, 200,000, purchases, 125, beginning inventory, 40,000, gross profit margin, 30%. What do they want? Prepare a trading account for Sweet Serve Company for the period showing clearly inventories, cost of goods sold, and gross profit. All right. So we want the trading account. Now, the thing is, this topic is actually part of incomplete records, which was removed from the CSEC syllabus. But I'm going to go through it because there is still an aspect on the CSEC syllabus called gross margin or cost plus pricing. So I'm going to just go through just in case some semblance of a question like this ends up on a paper in the future. Okay. Now, we don't have closing stock, but that's what they want. And they also want a social cost of goods sold. Okay. So let's start oh sorry let me just take off that right so let's let's start by heading up so please don't forget to head up right sweet serve company trading account for the period just ended so they, they didn't give us a date december 31st march 31st nothing like that so don't worry about it let's put some dollar signs now we do have sales two hundred thousand. that's cost of goods sold right cost of goods sold and we have opening stock beginning inventory forty thousand. we have purchases 125 and that gives us the cost of goods available for sale now, we don't have the closing stock. So if we don't have that, we can't find cost of goods sold by the conventional method, uh, which is by subtracting closing stock from the cost of goods available. Now, if we can't find cost of goods sold, how do we find gross profit? Right. That is where your gross profit margin comes in. Gross profit margin is your gross profit expressed as a percentage of your sales or net sales rather. But here we have just sales, so don't worry about it too much. So what that means is all we have to do to find gross profit is find 30% of the sales figure. And 30% of 200,000 is 60,000, right? So you're seeing a little working here. And to find the cost of goods sold or cost of sales, according to how you, how you call it. So normally we take the sales and we subtract the cost of sales to find gross profit. So what we could do now is we could take the gross profit and subtract it from the sales to find cost of sales. Right, so cost of goods sold, 200 minus 60 is 140. So we can find the closing stock because normally, so by the same logic, normally we say cost of goods available for sale minus closing stock is cost of goods sold. So if we have cost of goods available and cost of goods sold, we could subtract, find the difference, and we will find the closing stock. Right, so that's ending inventory, 165 minus 140 is 25. Right, so again, this topic in complete records was taken off the CSEC syllabus, but there is still some element on it where that says you guys have to know about cost plus pricing and that sort of stuff. So that is something along these lines. So just in case it brings something out in the future, at least maybe you can have an idea about what to do using this question. Okay, so the other questions on this require T accounts. So just give me a couple seconds. Let me shift around my, my, my screen. Okay, let's take a look at this part of the question. So it says, the following is a summary of Sweet Sales Bank account for the year ended 31st December 2017. So we have a balance brought down on the debit side, regular asset balance. We have sales revenue, well, sales received and rent received. Okay, cool. On the credit side, we have a few expenses and some and drawings and the closing balance carried down and then brought down here. Now, if, you look, if you're looking closely, you'll notice that this stuff looks a little different font-wise from the rest of the stuff. That's because there was an error in the paper, right? They actually had the drawings and balance carried down on this side, which was clearly an error. Right, so um, I'm hoping that in this exam, the Jan 2018, there was an errata sheet which would have told students what the correct thing was. If not, well, you guys need to do better. <laughs> okay, so we have some extra information down here. It says the following additional information is also available. So it says 31st December 2016 and then 31st December 2017. So that, those are clearly the opening and closing balances for rent revenue outstanding right, and insurance expense owing. So they want us to do, right, using T accounts, prepare the following accounts with Sweet Serve. So they want rent revenue account and they want the insurance expense account. Okay, so let's let's go through both of them. All right, I'm gonna scroll out, zoom out a little bit. All right, okay, cool. 
So let's start with the rent revenue account. So rent revenue outstanding is an asset. Outstanding means you haven't received it, which means you are owed that rent revenue and any revenue owing to you is an asset. And assets have balances brought down on the debit side. Uh, at the end of the period, we also have rent revenue outstanding, which again will be brought down on the debit side. But it will first have to be carried down from the credit side from the previous period. The other thing we have with regard to rent revenue is rent received in the bank account of 24000 which means if it's on the debit side there, it's going to be on the credit side here. All right? So that means that our totals have to match. So what is the balancing figure here? That is the income statement figure. Right, the amount of rent revenue in, um, earned. Now, if you guys need a refresh on how to do revenue accounts, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. You're going to see the same question on it, right? So just know that. <laughs> but in case you want some more examples, some more practice, you can take a look there. Okay, now let's scroll down and take a look at the insurance expense account. So insurance expense owing, we also call it accrued. And accrued expenses are liabilities. And liabilities have balances brought down on the credit side. So we're going to go on the credit side, put insurance owing brought down 1500 That's the opening balance here. The closing balance is also 700 which is also brought down on the credit side, but will be carried down from the debit side in the initial period. The other thing attached to insurance is the payment made to insurance, which is $45,000. So that's going to be put on the debit side. Because when you pay an expense, you have a debit item, right? Now, um, again, yeah, if it's credited here, the other account affected has to be debited. So you're going to see debit to insurance here. And what is the missing figure? Well, that is the income statement figure for insurance expense incurred, 44200 All right. So, um, again, I have a, a video on how to do expense accounts. I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to message me. Well, or put a comment in the, <laughs> the comment section below. Now, the next thing they want, so the last thing in the question, is the provision, the provision for bad debts account. So let's take a read of the question. So it says, so a company started business on 1 Jan 2015 and decided to maintain a provision for bad debts of 4% of its year-end account receivable. Account receivable for the first three years of operations was followed. So the first three years is 2015, 16, and 17. And the balances are 72, 84, and 80. Okay. Now, if you are a bit rusty or don't know how to do the provision for balance account, I'm going to put a card up there to my video on it and a link in the description below. Anybody else who's watching who's not doing the CSEC syllabus, there is an alternative method for the double entry bookkeeping for provision for bad debts, which I do not yet have a video for. I will be making that video in the coming months. Hopefully, by the time you see this, I, will, I would have made it. All right. In any case, the, the method I'm going to be covering now is the one that is kind of more British based that we use in the Caribbean for CSEC POE. So at the end of December 2015, we have to find 4% of 72,000. So that's going to be 2880. All right. So now when you do the double entry, you're going to debit, income statement, and credit the provision account. So remember, the provision account, its function is to reduce the debtor's balance in the balance sheet. Debt is as an asset. To reduce an asset balance, which is a debit balance, you have to have a corresponding credit balance. So debits and credits will cancel. So the balance will be carried on from that side and it's going to be brought down on this side here. Okay. So um, I didn't put a date column because I wanted all of the T accounts to line up pretty well um, <coughs> on my Excel spread. So I do apologize for no date column, but you see any dates here, hopefully, right? <laughs> 1 1 16, Jan 1st, 2016. Now, at the end of 2016, we have 84,000. So, 4% so of that would be 3360. Now, we have an existing provision of 2880. So, we don't need to, to adjust by 3360. We need to adjust to 3360. As in, the total at the end would end up being 3360. Well, the, more importantly, balance must end up being 3360. Right? Balance carried down. So how do we get that balance carried down to be 3360 if we have an existing balance of 2880? We have to increase it. And how do we know how much by, by which to increase it? We find the difference between the opening balance and the closing balance, which in this case will be $480. Again, check out the video I made on provision for bad debts. If that didn't really click, I know I'm kind of just browsing through it now. 
and maybe the explanation I gave didn't do it justice. I do apologize, but again, I have a video on it that you can go and check out. Okay, now we're going to bring that 3360 down here, and we're going to have um, the last year, which is 31st December 2017, 80,000. So 4% of that is 3,200. So your balance carried down has to be 3,200. Now, if that's the case, what's going to happen? I mean, we can't, if we put an entry on the credit side, we're going to increase the provision. But clearly, we have to decrease the provision. So, so how do we do that? Well, if crediting increased it, debiting will decrease it. So we'll have to decrease it by the amount which will carry it down to the 3200, the provision, the calculated provision balance. Okay. So, ladies and gents, that's about it for this question. Again, if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comment section below. I will try my best to answer them. You can check out more playlists up here and across here. You can check out, I hope I put my, uh, as in the, um, my subscribe on this side, and you can check out my website instead for free PAA handouts. If not, I mix it up, whatever. Okay. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.